With this ball, you will meet kings and queens, presidents and senators. You will travel to different countries and make new friends. Your teammates that you play with will be your lifelong friends. This ball and this game will make you happy and make you sad. Who is John McClendon? Well, John is one of the most successful and influential coaches in the history of American basketball. When you think of the greatest coaches in history, did his name pop into your head? Or did names like James Naismith, John Wooden, Bob Knight, or Phil Jackson pop up? John McClendon was born in 1915 in the town of Hiawatha, Kansas, to an African-American father and Delaware Indian mother. After his mother died young, he went to live with his brother and grandmother in Colorado. From the time he first saw the game at age of 10, he became obsessed with basketball. After playing in high school, McClendon knew he wanted to pursue a career in coaching and physical education. Despite his stepmother's disdain, his father always remained supportive. After learning that James Naismith had invented the game at Springfield College in Massachusetts, he set his sights on that school. However, his father learned that Naismith was actually teaching and working as an athletic director at University of Kansas since 1898 and pushed him to go there instead. When McClendon first arrived on campus in 1933, he went straight to Naismith's office and told him that he was Naismith's new advisee. When Naismith asked McClendon who told him that, he said, my father. Naismith replied with, well, come on in. Fathers are always right. The young African-American man and basketball creator became the hoops version of Mr. Miyagi and the Karate Kid. During McClendon's time at the University of Kansas, it was not easy for him to be African-American. The basketball coach at school, the legendary Forrest Fogg Allen, coached an all-white team. While he tried out each year, he was cut every time. The duo did in fact successfully desegregate the campus swimming pool so both blacks and whites could swim at the same time. After graduation in 1936, McClendon got a coaching job at the North Carolina College for Negroes. Even after Naismith's death in 1940, McClendon carried on his mentor's lessons in his own coaching style. McClendon believed that basketball should be used as a tool to develop discipline and character. His players were allowed to use the entire alphabet as long as they avoided the three W's, wine, weed, and woman. McClendon went off Naismith's idea of attack on offense and defense by designing a system based around constant movement. He imagined the game being played baseline to baseline with aggressive defense and the ball getting pushed up court with tempo on offense. The plan was for a shot to be taken every eight seconds. In his mind, this was more effective for scoring, but also made it more fun. He also developed a platoon system, moving players in and out of the game so that the constant pressure could be kept on the other team. In one game, McClendon's team ran so much that the referees themselves had to call a timeout in order for them to catch their breaths. His techniques proved successful when in McClendon's first year as a head coach in 1941, the North Carolina College won the Negro National College Championship Tournament. While at NCCU between the years of 1941 and 1952, his team won eight CIAA championships. McClendon went on to coach at the Hampton Institute and later transformed Tennessee State a and University into an NAIA powerhouse. There he won three consecutive NAIA championships from 1957 to 1959. He was the first college basketball coach to win three straight championships. Not only was McClendon able to produce winners, but he was also able to produce respect. He was praised for his ability to teach fundamentals, maintain his composure, and devise strategy on court as if his players and the opposition were like pieces in chess, one of his favorite games. The thing I remember about Coach McLennan was that he never cursed, he never shouted. You could just feel the resolution in his personality. McLennan's abilities led him to become the first African American to coach professionally. 
He was hired in 1962 to coach the Cleveland Pipers of the American Basketball League. McClendon resigned midway through the season after clashing with owner George Steinbrenner over the owner's intense meddling with the team. After a short period of time at Kentucky State College, McClendon took over at Cleveland State University in 1966 as the first black man to coach a predominantly white college basketball team. McClendon later said that he enjoyed coaching at the college level over professionally. With college ball, he was able to create close relationships, which shooted him more than the game where players got traded away and moved due to management. By the end of his college coaching career, he had a combined record of 496 wins and only 179 losses. He never got the opportunity to coach at a major college program, such as his alma mater, Kansas. He once said, quote, I did all I could at the time frame I was in, end quote. In 1979, he was enshrined into the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame as a contributor, something many people see as a terrible oversight. Finally, in September of 2016, he will be inducted in as a coach. He is the first to be on the list for both contributor and coach. His contributions to the game are beyond immense, including the invention of four-cornered offense and the full-court press, making his induction well-deserved. From 1915 to 1999, as an African-American man and coach, he dealt with the pressures of segregation and racial discrimination. I am sure there are plenty of times where he felt trapped and isolated, but he never panicked. He simply split the trapping defense and advanced his cause of human decency through the game of basketball and scored. When he wasn't scoring for himself, he was assisting for others, giving his best. McClendon tied the creator of basketball to the present. His interest and influence stretches from the beginning and will continue forever. Rather than letting the Naismith name burden him, he let his own coaching do the talking. Not only did he play a major role in integrating national tournament competition, but he was the first coach to capture three consecutive national championships, the first black coach of an integrated professional team, the first black coach in the ABA, an early pioneer of the fast break, the full court press, and the two in the corner offense. With one hand in the past and one in the future, McLennan is continuing to affect the game of basketball.